So let's start by having both of you say and then spell your names. Okay. Uh, Morgan, M-O-R-G-A-N, Owl, O-W-L-E, hyphen, crisp, C-R-I-S-P. And my name is Colette Partridge Coggins, and it's C-O-L-L-E-T-T-E, P-A-R-T-R-I-D-G-E, C-O-G-G-I-N-S. Awesome. That's a long name. <laughs> and uh, so it is July 2nd. We are in Canton, North Carolina with uh, Morgan and Colette from Seven Clans Brewing, and it's seven with a seven number, as opposed to spelled out, um, doing an interview for Wellcrafted NC. So for both of you, let's get a, just get started with a little bit about yourself. Where are y'all from around here? Um, I am, I was born on a 3,200 acre track in Cherokee, North Carolina, and um, then my parents moved to the Deep Creek area right by the National Park, and so I grew up there. I'm 38 years old, um, and I've been married for 18 years to my husband, and uh, I have a daughter. She's 11. And I was born and raised in Cherokee in the Burtown community, and um, gosh, she threw out the name of her, I mean, the <laughs> date of her age. You don't have to. <laughs> it's okay. I'm glad to be here at 51. <laughs> so, um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm 51 years old. Um, I've lived in Cherokee the majority of our lives. We, um, I've been with my husband for 35 years. We have two children, a boy that is 29 years old and a daughter that is 23. Um, and we also have lived in Asheville, uh, part of our time together, and then we came back to Cherokee. Um, about 26 years ago, opened up, I guess it's been 28 years ago, opened up a business there, and then we've just been back in Cherokee pretty much so um, for the last 28 years operating businesses, different yeah. businesses. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what, what for each of you, what is your, your title? with the brewery do you have a title you've given yourself owner well we're both owners i think i'm president just and she's vice president but i mean we're we're in this together so it's yeah does it really doesn't really <laughs> matter <effort. laughs> yeah <it's a> joy. <laughs> that makes sense so let's talk about how y'all first got started like what interested you in this industry well i used to be the alcohol commissioner for the tribe and so i was kind of on the other side of the <laughs> of the river of it and I uh, learned about it and learned about the regulations and all about it but I was always interested in it and um, we've been friends with have known Travis and Morgan for a long time been friends with them for a long time and um, we were actually meeting with them for our first encounter we were meeting with them here at Bearwaters um, to discuss some other business adventures that we're doing together and it just came about that we just started talking about how really neat the place was, how how much we enjoyed it, how much we enjoyed the brewing atmosphere, um, what we thought that it was going to entail for, for the future and, and the wave of, of the millennials and, and things coming up and from that I think our business just kind of um, erupted from there. Mm -hmm. It, it, and, and it did it quite rapidly and it's just kind of all falling together. I mean, Morgan's done, I, I keep looking at her because I'm, I'm so impressed with this. I mean, I really have to because the two of us together have worked very hard on it and have had to go at a lot of different angles and um, it's been awesome so far. The ride's been awesome. Yeah. So uh, when, when did this idea come about? When did y'all first kind of come up with the Let's go with a brewery. Probably that day that we talked. We just, I've been in the hospitality industry for several years. My husband and I had, we've had four different restaurants. So that was kind of how I was introduced in craft beer industry. But mm -hmm. um, we just, we just decided we were just going to really go for it. We felt like um, for Cherokee especially, um, we saw what like what Asheville was doing with the craft beer industry and how it would take a kind of underdeveloped area and you would you know create this um, all new economic development around that and so that was what kind of drove us to say okay let's let's do that let's create that and then we had to figure out how to make the beer so that was the second part but we knew that, <laughs> that we was wanted, the really hard yeah part. that was the hardest part <laughs> 
But we both have been, um, Morgan and Travis have businesses in Cherokee. My husband and I's primary businesses are in Cherokee, and we love Cherokee. Um, it's, my daughter made the best statement ever, um, and she said, you can't explain what being Cherokee means because it's different to each individual. And so we are, it's just, we're Cherokee, and to each person that means a little bit different thing, but we, um, wanted to bring our heritage into it. We wanted it to be in Cherokee. We have businesses there. We wanted to try to revive and um, bring something new to the area that hasn't, you know, it's an untapped business there in Cherokee. And we wanted to be the first women to do it and to, to show, um, show the younger generations that actually there truly is no bounds on what um, if you want to do something, then if you work hard enough and you get out there and you try it, you try and do anything. So yeah. that's kind of where we, I mean, we discussed it here and we were like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And uh, our husbands looked at us and they're like, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that's kind of, yeah. Travis called the next just, day and he's like, okay, I've got this, this, and this done. What have you got done? <laughs> And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we've got this and this. And he's like, we're rolling. Yep. Let's go with this. <laughs> we didn't waste so. any time. And I think it takes just yeah. guts. I mean, yeah. just pure guts just yeah. to just do it like we just did it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So can y'all talk about some of the resources that y'all drawn on kind of to start and get going in the... Well, of course, we're here at Bearwater. So there are contract brewers, and these guys have been so helpful. Tremendously. Yeah, yeah. for us just to, to try to figure out what we wanted to do where we wanted to go and to help us you know just facilitate the whole thing you know those Absolutely. guys yeah because they have been a key key player in it and they will continue to mm -hmm. be a key player yeah. in where we move forward because i mean our inevitable inevitable goal is that we want a brewery mm -hmm. and and we will um we will lean on them for advice um and guidance and and they are so gracious to us to to give us all the help that they have given us so far and uh, and i feel that they will continue to help us and uh, i mean they're as excited for us as we are excited for ourselves because i mean they play a major role in it they're they're um doing the contract brews for us so yeah well and so um you know you talked about one of the hardest parts starting off was kind of the brewing part yeah can you talk a little bit about what you had to do yeah, to kind well, of get that I mean, piece down I guess we kind of we wanted to find out where our market was who who it was that we were gonna try to sell beer to um, and we know you know Asheville is just so I mean there's just so many crazy every different thing in the world and we knew that um, probably one of our main customers would be Harris Cherokee Casino and a lot of people that come there may not know a lot or they what we've noticed is they don't know a lot about craft beer because they're from different parts of different states so we wanted to create something that's sort of like an introduction to craft beer um, so our recipes are very very simple they're very I guess I shouldn't say simple because making beer is complex but you know nothing you know um, just very easy to drink Mm -hmm. And, and um, to um, allude more to what Morgan said is we want them to have the craft beer experience and to know about the craft beer, but we also wanted to incorporate who we are and where we're from, and so that falls back to a lot of the name of our company, uh, the location of our company, and the... Um, not to jump forward, but the graphics and the artwork and, and the, that type of things uh, for our beer because we want to stay true to who we are, mm -hmm. but we also want to, um, and I think we have the capacity and the, and the capability of, of moving our beer forward in that world. I mean, it, in the Native American world, I mean, it's truly an untouched source. Um, and Morgan and I are very excited to be the flagship women, <laughs> as to, per se, to, to, to kind of march that forward. And it did, we definitely are for the Cherokees. And we want it to be a positive thing and, um, and, and just really kind of blast it out there. I mean, it brings a whole new aspect to, to craft beer. I mean, it's not just Joe over here brewing beer in the garage and hey, we're throwing up a business here that, I mean, okay, so if you look at them and say, well, gosh, what's your story? 
what, what, what do you have? What's your background to it? Or tell us what you're, you're hoping for out of it. Well, yeah. You know, what are their stories? And they, I mean, of course, everybody's is different and everybody's is unique, but I feel that ours is very unique um, because we have our whole culture behind us. I mean, we just have to, to tap in it to it uh, properly and um, I don't know how to say it, but um, yes, authentically yeah. and authentic. Yeah, thank you. Creatively and authentically as we can. So. Yeah. And so kind of to, to follow up on that, how would you define like the main mission or theme for seven clans? I think there's like I think there's like three separate things. I think there's good beer, obviously. I think everybody wants. I don't think anybody sets out to do this and make bad beer. I, th I think secondly is 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 our culture. We want to be able to share that with people because not everybody knows about Cherokee and beer is universal. And so if we can take a product or medium that's universal and um, let people know that our culture is alive. It's not something from the past. It's a, it's a living, breathing culture. We can do that and share that with them, you know. And then I guess the third thing would probably be to spur that economic growth in our own community that's is really lacking. And I feel as enrolled members, we ha we sort of have a we're sort of burdened to do that. We've as, got an obligation as, to do yeah, that. Yeah, as business owners that can you know do anything that we want you know anything that we we set our minds to do we can we can do it and and so I think um, that's a good message to tell people and and bring it back to our own community yeah definitely so we can unpack some of the other stuff you were talking about a minute ago can you talk a little bit about the name how you how how did you decide on the name and what does it mean to you mm -hmm. It's it's kind of crazy because it's it's one of those things that you know it's just meant to happen. But in our conversation, and we were actually sitting at that table right there when we actually started our conversation. And um, my husband and I had thought about a brewery for for a long time, or thought about well, you know, if we if we ever opened a brewery, because being the alcohol commissioner, I saw a lot of things on the other side, and I knew what was coming or what the opportunities that Cherokee had. Uh, coming down the line for it and the, and the opportunities and we always just said um, my husband said well if we if we ever open up a brewery we're going to name it Seven Clans and so we're sitting here and talking and he says we're going to open a brewery if, you know if we were going to open a brewery like this we'd name it Seven Clans and Morgan yeah. said oh my god that's exactly what Travis and I said, yeah. and that's the exact name that we were going to yeah. use. So we never even had to think about yeah. what I mean, our name it was, was going to yeah. be. That, and, and that's how it birthed, was just that conversation right there. And I mean, we knew it, that then that was the first and only name that came out. And, and I mean, it, because it was so bizarre, because that's what we had in our heart. And, and my husband had said repeatedly about it, and Morgan, I mean, she she didn't even bat an eye. We bar uh, we barely got it out of our mouth, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, that's exactly what Travis and I have talked about." And so, um, it's it just that I mean, that was just how simple that it started, and then we just started to work on it from there. Of course, structured our company and and um, took off from there. And it's yeah. I, I know that that sounds really crazy and yeah. really simplified, but honestly, that's how simple to get the idea going. Um, and then, of course, then the hard work just comes into play after that. Yeah. So. And so, you know, you also talked about the, the names of the beer and then the artwork. Um, can you talk a little bit about, about those and how they kind of tie back in to your, to your main mission? Well, we kind of wanted to tell a story and be able to tell a story with our beer um, and just give information about our culture. Just to, um, I guess, just to kind of... the spark the interest in consumers or people that don't know anything about Cherokee. So, you know, that, whether our story was kind of uh, created from the beer or the beer creates the story, you know, it's just kind of, it just sort of happens. It just feels really natural. Like, yeah. I, I tell our Cherokee stories to my daughter all the time because um, I think we just, we grew up with that. We, that's kind of how we understand right from wrong we understand our native humor I mean there's just so much in the stories and you know it's just easy for yeah. us to share I, I can't imagine us our beer being anything other than what it is yeah and so can you talk a little bit about what what beers are y'all producing now 
We have two beers out right now. We have a Blondell and then we have an IPA. Um, and they both have great stories on them. Um, and then our next beer, we can't tell right now because it's kind of a surprise, but it'll be out soon. Um, and it will have a story with it also. But we want our stories to stay positive. We want them to stay fun. And I mean, it, because the Cherokees are known for being so stoic and historic and, and kind of everybody always hears the negative stories and you know, all the sad stories now. There's a lot of fun stories out there, and there's a lot of good stories and a lot of positive stories and uh, legends and and one thing and another. And we just hope to be able to um, develop from those, think about those, uh, be respectful with them, and um, just go forward with them and see see where we're at. I think that we're hoping to be out with how many by the end of the year? Um, probably at least two more by the end of this so. year, yeah. And our first beer was uh, um, on the can, you'll see a picture of Shalu, and so she was our first woman. And yeah. our stories tell us that she was created because a um, man had been created, but he got really lazy. And so, <laughs> so one woman had to be created, so she was the first woman. But Look here, the women still are creative. I'm just going to throw that out there. So it you. really was kind of owed to like being a woman, being native, um, being, um, you know, the, the role that native women have in their community is, uh, I don't know how it would function without us, you know? I mean, we just, true. so. Um, now, is that the blonde or the Yeah, that was the blonde. That was okay. the blonde. Yeah, so it really was kind of about Colette and I being native women, being the first to do something. Um, and you know, kind of that love that we have for our community and our children, and that's how we tried to express it through that first beer. Morgan and Barry are my husband. Barry are the um, the creative ones. I just got to throw that out there. <laughs> they're the they're the crafty ones and the and uh, the artistic ones because Morgan has played um, a huge huge role in the in the factor of designing with the, with our design team designing the cans and in uh, the, the colors schemes and um, I'm I'm a lot more simpler than she is so it works out really good because she pays attention to details and I I don't she handles all the rest I, of I, it I get excited <laughs> and I'm like yeah yeah okay just tell me tell me what it's gonna be you know that kind of thing I worry about the wrong things and thank God that she worries about those because the creativity part of it has just been phenomenal I mean um, we've had people as we've got out and promoted our beer and and went different places and in different situations but we have had people that have said you know a lot of people have to create the really good beer and then create their um, identification to it as to where we have our design as a home run hit and the beer's good also so you know I'm thinking that we've got two home runs right straight out of the bat so it, I mean it's going to be a really hard, really hard to um, to keep up with that because yeah. we've set the bar really high to begin with. Um, but I feel like that that's not an issue, a problem for us to do. But I, I truly, I mean, I have to give that to Morgan because it's just been, I mean, our artwork and, and the team that that um, we have on board has just done a phenomenal job. I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine anywhere else it been that been that great. I mean, you people will see us. Um, they will see our logo and they're going to know exactly. They may not know which beer that it is, but they will know exactly what company it comes from. Yeah. We will stand out. We're going to be standing out. And it was a female that's on our design yeah. team. She lives in Black yeah. Mountain, and so she's she's yeah. she doesn't have Native American heritage, but she has. She a, has the love for it, though. She, yeah, yeah. She, she loves us now. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. She, she loves us, or she, she would love to. to kill us. One of the two. But she she is she's awesome. Yeah. I mean, but truly. Her, What's her name? LaRonda Morrow. Mm -hmm. um, and she has a company called Three Sheets Design. Yeah. yeah. So, what's the story behind the IPA? Um, it, well, IPAs are just so, especially this one, is just so earthy. Like, that, I guess that's the only way to really to describe it. It's just really earthy and dank and just coming from the ground. And so that was the imagery that we have, just like hands in the ground with the roots and um, also with our, you know, 
for tops and the dirt. Yeah, and well, just for the Cherokees, our, our plant, I mean, we get everything. We were supplied everything that we was, needed from yeah. the earth. And then, so that's kind of the we idea. We give everything to the earth and to the creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so um, you know, you mentioned that we're here at uh, Bear Waters where they do the contract brewing. Can you talk about like the decision to start with contract brewing? Um, as, as that is a way of starting the, the company? Well, it's it's money. You know, you got to have a lot of money to start a brewery. I mean, people don't understand that is uh, how much it costs. And and we wanted to do it quick, and they had everything we needed to do it quick. So, that, that is you know, so true. Like and, just, you know, you want to make sure you don't, we, we didn't want to spend, because like I said, we were meeting on it, um, working on a different development um, a business that we're doing. So do you take all your money from one development and take, yeah. put it into the other development, or do you try to make both of them work? And our creative way of coming up with trying to make them both work is because, well, first and foremost is, is you got to make sure that your beer is good and that our, and that our recipes were, were good, that people would mm -hmm. buy them. And so, and, you know, before you sink a million plus dollars into something, um, you, you've got to come up with alternative routes if you don't want to do that. And so our alternative to that was the contract brewing, and um, they offered. We we were excited, and, and we just took lead from there. But, um, yeah, we were able to get our beers out there to see if people liked them even before. You know, I mean, there's a lot of breweries that, that open up, start up, and before you know it, are gone because the beer's no good. Um, the design, I mean, you know, they just didn't have the catchy catchiness of it it just didn't catch on so they're gone and they're out of business so this way we knew that if we will now we have we have the knowledge to know that we have the um the labeling that we have our design and we have good beer we need to continue to have good beer and we're we're rolling yeah so that i mean that's kind of the concept of it is we just thought before we invest all of this money into it we need to know if this is something that we're capable of doing if it's something that um that we're even going to like you know so that's what we did and here we are and, we, and, and we're loving it yeah. we didn't just we just didn't pick somebody out of the blue right. um Art, who's one of the owners here bear waters uh, he and, and and travis and i had a relationship because we were in food and beverage together before so that was how uh, but of you know Bear Waters has just been so good about their beer and their quality and so I mean it was an easy you know luckily for us we had this you know organic relationship anyway and then getting to know them and their process with how they and the integrity that they have with their products it was just a win-win for us so. yeah so you talked a little bit about some of the promotional events that y'all have done. Can you talk we about them? Can you <laughs> talk <laughs> about like <laughs> where? Probably left them more that, than that, yeah. 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 I was saying, where, where have y'all where have y'all gone, and what kind of feedback have y'all been getting? We have had phenomenal feedback. Um, actually, I don't think that we have had. I, I missed an event, so I, I don't think that we've had anything negative. To tell you the truth, we have been at uh, several different um, occasions at the casino at Harrah's. Um, we have been to out of town ones at other uh, Harris properties in, in different locations, and then we have done some low just getting started um, because of the season. Getting started, uh, Travis and Morgan did a bike ride that yeah. they have the um, Fire Mountain Trail, Fire system. Mountain Trail yeah, in it's, Cherokee, it's, which is a phenomenal um, mountain bike trail thing that they have there, and they did the uh, the event there, and we give away swag meet the people, they are getting to sample the beer, and at, at every event they're sampling the beer. Mm -hmm. um, and we just ask them, I mean, very bluntly, very uh, serious, look, you know, here's your opportunity. We need your true feedback. You like it, you don't like it, what would you change about it? And we, the, the feedback that we have had has just been phenomenal, I mean, yeah. truthfully. And, and they all love the swag. So yeah. whatever we're giving away, they're going to take it. it yeah. <laughs> so, so we really try to choose um, fun stuff that we would want to be yeah. getting if we were out somewhere. So we're so when we're out giving out the swag, we, we truly try to, yeah. to make it fun. It's not just a it, it, we so far we're not feeling like oh gosh it's just an event and you've got to go and you know deal with we're these in people. the romantic stage yeah. of it we're probably still, <laughs> we're still, well I don't know I still get excited but now if you can't tell already I'm the talker and so 
<laughs> but we, we've had so many people like you, you know, with, with, and different schools and even individuals at different schools will say, wow, these women are doing something new. Like, can, can I pick your brain? Yep. Like, yeah. like why? I mean, I'm, it's just <laughs> us, you know? But, yeah, it's just been... Um, it's just been really exciting and inspiring. It makes me want to do better too. It makes yeah. me want to um, make sure that I'm at my top game. Yeah. So, you know, I mentioned earlier that we saw some of y'all's cans in Asheville. Can you talk about like how far, where you guys are distributing now? Yeah, we're self-distributing mm -hmm. um, and, and we're doing it in slow, slowly so we know how much beer to make. And there's all those things that you have to figure out, especially our schedule with bare water schedule, you know. Um, but we're in about 50 locations right now. A lot of uh, restaurants. I think we're all the way from Tryon to, to Murphy, North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so we, we have two sales guys, and they just go out and talk to people. And I don't think anybody's really turned us down that we've... Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. If they do, we're going to be on the doorstep <laughs> every day. Yeah. So, so, are y'all are y'all doing like kegs and yeah, cans? Yeah, kegs and cans. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you do your own like is the canning here or mm -hmm. do you? We we bought the cask uh, canning oh. machine. Yeah. And so it's here, but and Bear Waters uses it too. And and we it was it was something they needed, and that goes back to this relationship with the contract brewing, which is great because you know they're helping us. We also help them by getting the can machine. Now they're able to can their beers and take it with their distributing it, with Bud of Asheville. So, I it, mean, it's just a mutual yeah, relationship. Yeah, it, it gave us the opportunity to go from just being able to go into restaurants or bars or whatever with kegs to them being able to can our beer for us yeah. and then us go out and sell the yeah. beer in the, you know, in the cans. Yeah. So, and like you said, your cans, the, the art on your cans tell a story. So being yeah. able yeah. to see that. And that's extra. what we wanted to have more than anything was to get the cans out there. And we've had a lot of women, a lot a, a good response from women. I don't think we, I mean, I think we kind of did it intentionally with our first beer. But, you know, like I'll come here in Fairwaters and there'll be like a group of teachers, you know, from after school. And they're all drinking our beer. And I'm like, all these women, and, I like mean, they don't, beer. they don't know us. You know, they don't, I mean, it's like that's so awesome that other yeah. women are drinking our beer and yeah. it's the slim can so I, th I think it's just more we put thinner. a lot of thought into it and we wanted to make the slim can we came out with the slim cans and that's what we're going to stick with um because of, of it being a woman but also to be if if men were taking it and you're going um like backpacking, hiking, coolers, whatever, the slim cans fit in yeah. actually better. Um, but it's it's been kind of funny to see the response for the slim cans because we're the only slim can beer out there right now, and so um, that that's been that's been kind of fun to watch. But, it, but like Morgan said, it's truly amazing to see the women. Um, you know, I mean, men are beer drinkers, and and that's just a given. It, it, I mean, it's exciting that they like our beer. Um, but it's really excited when the women get excited about it. And we just did an event over the weekend. Um, and I mean, people get so excited to meet us. And I mean, it, it feels good. It's, it makes you feel good because they're excited that you've done, that, it, that we have branched out and done something that is not on the norm uh, for women. And we have had just a truly positive experience with um, the support that we have had from, from other women and from, some men. I mean, mm -hmm. truly, from some men that I didn't think it would come from, we, we have had a tremendous response to uh, the positive side of it. So that's been good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that kind of ties into one of the questions that I've been asking the women I'm talking to in this project. Are there, you know, like you said, craft brewing is traditionally kind of thought of as a man's yeah. world. Are, have you had challenges that you face being a woman in the industry, particularly a relatively new to the industry? <laughs> I don't think so because we pretty much tell them what we're going to do and what we think. You know, yeah. <laughs> they just have if to take know, us. If, you, if you know what the law is and you know what you can do and you follow by the law, then we just pretty much set our mind to it and go at it. But yeah. we've also been yeah. in construction, and yeah. that's women are typically not in construction yeah. either. So we, yeah. like the, we like those careers that you're typically not 
it's seeing a, <laughs> the average woman in too. So yeah. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, one of the cool things though is that you, I mean, you kind of stand out because of it too, and yeah. so other women come and find you. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> um, we hope to inspire some young women. Yeah. Yeah. I have a daughter that's 23, and I hope that she sees the um, the strength. That, and the endurance and the, and just that when you when you set your mind to it you can do anything you know with the hard work and the perseverance so and she's here yeah. to support her today my yeah. 11 year olds and they're playing video games but <laughs> she's here and she's at all our meetings she's at all of our meetings yeah, yeah. And so i mean i hope that i can teach her if that's what she decides to do is be in business that yeah. you know, yeah. she learns something yeah. or just gets to see what mom does yeah so, I mean, this kind of ties into that. If you had a woman who came in right now and had your beer and was like, this is awesome, how do I get into this industry? What advice would you give to a woman who's looking to, to enter the craft brewing industry? I would say, look, I'll meet you tomorrow <laughs> and I'll tell you all about it. And, and, I, and Morgan does the same thing because the more they get into it, the better it is for us. And I mean, it just opens more doors. And the more that, the more that, I mean, gosh, to think that you've helped your neighbor out or helped somebody out to, to get started in business, um, whatever, whether it be the same business that we're in or a different business, I mean, that's what we're here for. We're, you, you have to give back. Our, I feel like that Morgan and I, because this is where we truly have the same core, is you have to give back. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just, it's part of life. And that's what we do. And um, I, I have no problems with ever helping anybody. I, I have no, we have no secrets. I would tell them exactly how to do it tomorrow. We probably yeah. tell people too much. <laughs> we probably that's what, do. I think that's I the, probably the tell men people tell too us. Much, they're like, you, should, you probably shouldn't, shouldn't say that. that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but let me help you out. We've had them a long time, and they know that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, so um. What's your favorite part about working in this industry? What's, what, what so far has like been your favorite thing about working in the craft beer industry? Drinking it. <laughs> oh, wait, can we, can we edit that part out? Can we edit that part That's out? a good, honest it's answer. The it's the sampling. I really enjoy the sampling. It's a good, sampling. honest answer. <laughs> I, I've loved the creative side. It's also helped me personally, I think, get closer to my culture because I've tried to research and um, it just, you know, it's not just an aesthetic, it's the, the content behind it. So it's not just like a character of something. There's real yeah. deep meaning behind yeah. that. And it's, it's helped me see that and understand it better in my relationship to my own culture. So it's just been a really growing for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, y'all talked about kind of the, I don't know, the sense of cooperation with the folks oh, here we've had so much support i mean it's crazy yeah. i can't i wish i had more support in like other businesses that i've tried to do but i just feel like yeah. so many people have just been so excited about well and that's this. what i was going to yeah. ask like how would you compare this to some of the other business fields you both have been in other business fields yeah it's felt very lonely i felt very um, lonely in most this one, of this yeah th this as far as the people been kind about it it's been great as far as getting it structured and getting um getting in in into our own people it's been a little bit different yeah. it's it's um been a little bit harder uh, but we understand that and we know um the aesthetics of it uh and why people feel the way that they do i mean we get that so it's kind of been hard we have to be very careful and we have to um be very respectful i mean moving forward with with all that we do and so um that's that's probably been the yeah. truly that has been the only oh, yeah. rough part the mm -hmm. only hard part um and just learning a few lessons there and yeah but but truly it's it's been very gratifying so we have a yeah. different historically for our people we have a different um Belief. view viewpoint on alcohol mm -hmm. so that it, it has been um uh, it's been interesting to see how some people have changed some people um have still you know Reacted, have negative yeah. reactions towards that and you know if people don't want to drink great great yeah. you know but um so yeah we've learned a lot from yeah that. so if you put on your forward thinking glasses 
Where, where would you want, where would you want to see seven clans in five years? Gosh, we're going to be, I'm not even going to say we're going to be national because we're also going to be outside the realms of the United States. That's a, that's a promise. Yeah. We're going global. We've, we've already had I know had that that countries. says, know. that's like, wow, she's putting a lot out there, but I've got to tell you, I know we're <laughs> no. going global. Yeah. 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 And well, are y'all hoping to build yeah, a physical yes, spot yeah, of your own yes. too? And that's what I was yes. going to comment on. Is yeah. I, I think just having our, you know, our flagship brewery in Cherokee, it'll be the first ever on a reservation. So, um, but just, I think breweries have kind of taken on that um, communal relationship, community minded, and I just see you know all the people gathering there and that's what our culture is about too is about community and gathering and so we want to be kind of at the center of that um it's just a it's just been interesting to see that happen in other places so Mm -hmm. and and where we're located is is so tourist driven Uh, you know there's 13 million people that come right through there so of all different you know groups of you know ethnicities and you know hopefully yeah. yeah, hopefully yeah. it becomes a like a oasis for them. They've been on the, the park for, you know, 30 minutes or yeah. however an hour, long, yeah, an hour, an hour yeah. that trip is from Gatlinburg over to our side. And then, you know, like they see just this place of It will be family friendly. Yeah. It's going to be family friendly. Yeah. yeah. Which, which makes a difference. It's not what... You know, breweries today are, are, I mean, they're wonderful because there's so many activities and different things that, you know, that different ones put on in advance and this, that, and other. And so it's kind of hard changing some of the, the people's mindset. That's what I guess has been our um, issue, or, or not our issue, but what we have watched happen. But um, a brewery is not a bar, and a lot of people still have the mindset that if you're selling alcohol there, then you're down at the bar. But it's not. It'll be a family oriented, and if you want to have a drink, you're more than welcome to have a drink. And if you don't drink, it's okay because we will have events mm-hmm. for you there to do, and, and um, refreshments for you there also. So mm-hmm. it's not, you know, it's not like you just got to come and, and drink only there. There'll be there'll be other events that will take place um, there, and, and then it'll be a venue. So it's it's yeah. classless, it's sexless, all politics aside, yeah. everybody comes and that's and that's what I love about the spirit of, of yeah. the brewery. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about kind of just personally to you the importance of having I guess tie in kind of that beer and brewing culture to your Cherokee culture and like being able to tell your story in a place mm-hmm. like that. Can you talk a little bit about how like the importance of that to you and, and the business? I, it's just natural for us. I think, yeah. I mean, I've, I always share my culture with anybody that I meet. I'm always proud to tell them I'm Cherokee and where I'm from. And, you know, I'm always, like I said, telling stories to my daughter about, you know, um, I mean, just simple things in life about, you know, why certain animals are a certain way. You know, we have a story for that. And it's just, you know, it just makes yeah. us who we are. I can't imagine being any other way. Yeah. yeah. So, um, We have some fun questions that we like to use to uh, wrap up the interview. So you guys are making two beers right now. Can you pick a favorite? Do you have your own personal favorite between the two? I do. (laughs) She does. I do. (laughs) And and the blonde L is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Um, It's more of a. It's a smoother beer for me. I'm not a real hoppy person, uh, and I'm. I like like a. I almost like like a light beer type beer. Um, I've always been a domestic beer drinker before, um, just you know, I mean, not that long ago. And of course, and I still like some of them. But I truly said when we had our tastings, because we went through multiple tastings to get to where we didn't just make a beer and say, okay, that's it. We went through multiple tastings and different um, recipes in order to get where we were at with our with our beers. And when we finally hit that recipe that I really liked with the blonde, I was like, okay, that's it. I really like that beer. Yeah. And so I was like, we've got to stick with this beer. And they're like, okay. So that one's Colette's because 
I can't tell what I used to drink, but. <laughs> well, I was gonna actually ask, I mean, I think one of the interesting things is in North Carolina, especially, is that, I mean, the craft beer world here is still so new. Yeah. Do you remember what, what your intro to craft beer was, going from a domestic drinker to? Um, probably. What was your gateway? <laughs> what was my gateway? <laughs> oh, um, well, the gateway that kind of bridged it a little bit was the, um, it's the Belgian wheat, it's, um, can you think of the name of it now? Because quit drinking it's Shop Talk. I uh, and then there was, um, there's a little place in Bryson City that's a, Mountain Layers has a, um, a brewery there that we actually like to go to and visit with. And um, the beer that they have there is Newfound Gap and it's a, it's a uh, golden ale. And I, li I like it pretty good. So that kind of was, was it. That was my first was it, was it, ale yeah. From, yeah. from Wicked Weed. And yeah. it was the first time that I saw, you know, like everybody was using like oranges and coriander and that was a big thing. Yeah. And then Wicked Weed did their cool cucumber and it has cucumber and basil and juniper. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think I may really like craft beer now. I mean, like look yeah. at all the stuff that you could do. And it almost, it reminded me of Cherokee. It reminded me of something that I would make, make. some kind of yeah. medicine or tonic that we would make. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is you know yeah. that that was it for me it was like this feels this feels like home to yeah. me yeah so and yeah. i love that one yeah so can you pick a favorite between your two uh, probably the blonde i think i think colette and i both have sensitive yeah. palettes <laughs> so <laughs> the ipa is a little you know it's a dry hop so yeah. i think without the dry hop i really yeah. really like it it's it's smoother but yeah. when we dry hop it it's just a little bit Look, too <laughs> And the people either love a hoppy yeah. and as hoppy as yeah. they can get, or they're kind of like, I think it's know a big thing here. It's like everybody told us, like, we want an easy yeah. drinker and we yeah. and we need the bot, so that's why we have that's the bot. That's the first yeah. And I have to point this out. I hope, look, it landed, and I, I hope know. that you can see it. <laughs> but to our people, also, dragonflies are good luck. Oh, yeah. yes. and so yeah, so, you've got a dragonfly just flying around. We have a, we have a dragonfly yeah. that has been flying this whole interview, driving us yeah. nuts. But I've got to tell you, it just came and landed on our table. So I mean, that's just a sign. Yeah. That's just another sign for me that we are on the right path, and that is that's good. I, just, I have chill moms. Yeah, over. I know. That's that's. Awesome. I mean, he, he's just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, I'm sorry. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's awesome. I think we, because we do look for signs, I think, yeah. and yeah. things that happen, and we yeah. see them as like that was meant. Like us talking that day, we both knew that Seven Clans would be the name. Seven is such a powerful number for our, for our people, um, and just our our logo itself with the, that we came up with with its the seven sevens makes our elk head, yeah. and we have the elk that have been reintroduced into the national park there where we're at in Cherokee and so and that program within itself is thriving tremendously so I mean it's just it just all has meaning mm -hmm. it just didn't just pop yeah. up it all has meaning yeah and I think it was meant meant to be how it is so yeah so here's another fun question for you you've mentioned the mountain layers was it mm -hmm. in Bryson City so other than your own beers do you have a favorite North Carolina craft beer can you pick a favorite? It's, it's probably what I talked about, the cool, the cool cucumber <laughs> from Wicked Weed. They yeah. Just, those, the wild ales, when they started that, I just fell in love with them. And, and Mountain Layers has a silly puppy is the name of it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> silly puppy is the name of it. And then the very favorite, the one that got me going to Mountain Layers was called Barcode. And then, you know, they, they are small brewery, and so they change up a lot because they're not canning and putting, you know, out there. And it was one of their seasonal things. And uh, so every time I go in, I always just say, I'll have a barcode, and they're like, you know we don't have that right now. <laughs> yeah. So I went in over the weekend, and the lady says, look, we're coming back out of barcode. It's going to be two weeks. And I'm like, but silly puppy probably right now. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume that starting up a brewery from scratch takes a lot of time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what do y'all do for fun when you're not here? What are, what are some of your favorite things to do outside of running the businesses? My daughter is probably the life of me. You know, she does soccer and jujitsu and golf. So we're busy chasing her all the time. And, and before we started the brewery, I just quit um, retired from playing roller derby. I played for five years. What was your name? 
So malicious. <laughs> it's the most important uh, question yeah, to ask yeah, a real yeah. every person. <laughs> so, I mean, that was, and, and again, that's another experience that just being with other women and just like. Um, so, you know, she's a, she's a bad at it. It was so much fun. But I just had my, I had gone through another, sec, my second knee surgery. And so I had rehabbed back so I could get back out on the track. I did my year again on the track and then like two of my friends broke their legs. I was like, what am I doing? I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so like, so, you know, I had a little extra time. So I thought I'd start making beer. <laughs> <laughs> on top of everything yeah, else. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, like I said, I have two children and I, I'm, my children are grown children, but I seem to treat them as though they're still small children. Uh, my son that's 29, I say 28, but he just turned 29. Um, he has his own businesses in Cherokee, so I kind of, you know, just follow him around and see what see what he's got going on. And then, for the last <clears throat> few years, excuse me, we have followed my daughter. She played college softball, so we followed her across the country playing softball. Who'd she play um, for? She started out at UT playing, and then she moved back uh, home to Western, so she got more playing time and closer to home and. It just was a better fit for her. So we have followed her. Then she graduated with her master's. She quit playing ball because she played all she could play in college. She went and got her master's and then she decided that that wasn't good enough, that she wanted to join the bike ride for the ride of removal from the Trail of Tears uh, from the Cherokees that they do every year. And so she just got back from pedaling on a bicycle 1,000 miles from Georgia, New Echota, Georgia, to Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Took them 21 days. Yeah. So um, we followed her with that. We're still following her. Wherever she wants to go, we're gonna follow her. And um, I thought it was really sweet because today she says to me, because they had a lady that come, and I'm gonna tell my story. Um, she, they had a lady came and made them corn bead necklaces for all of the bike riders that were going to Oklahoma. And then she told them the story behind the corn bead necklace. Uh, for the Trail of Tears, and she wore her necklace every day the entire time while she was doing her, her ride. And a lot of the necklaces don't survive. They get broken during wrecks, just whatever. And she said, well, Mom, today, she said, I wish you good luck. And she said, and I want you to wear my necklace. And so this is actually my daughter's corn bead necklace that she wore when she rode her bike to Oklahoma. So needless to say, like Morgan, we're extremely proud of our children um, and I think our fun times is is, is our families I mean it you know it, it doesn't get any better than family time yeah. no matter what you're doing in both of our and like I said all of our meetings it, whether we've been in attorney's offices whether we've been at other situations Chloe which is her daughter is always there and you never hear a peep out of her I mean she's just like a small businesswoman that just sits there you know and so we incorporate our families in our businesses mm -hmm. in our business life and I think that uh, I mean you've got to have your core and your core has got to be your family and yeah. so we incorporate them and and that, that's our fun time Do, I mean doing business trying new things and, and family and bringing our husbands along there our husbands are always along I promise they're lurking around the corner right now <laughs> yep. well, and I mean I think that's a good way to kind of wrap up the interview too because it seems like family just really ties into the whole everything from how y'all started why you wanted to start to what you want to be it seems like that kind of is the string that ties it yep. all together it is yeah was there anything we didn't get to talk about today that you wanted to make sure we get when we're trying to tell your whole story? Just anything in case I didn't tell you, my partner's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this this lady is. I, mean, yeah. I learned so much from I mean, her. We Just, we have a good time. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It se it seems like you do. Yeah. It seems like y'all have a good time. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for sitting down with us. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for coming.